Okay. No problem. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Come on. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of In the Spotlight. I'm Mike Kenichi. I'm really excited because if you followed TV, especially in the 90s, this uh, guest today played a big part on a successful television series called Doogie Hauser. She played Janine Stewart for four seasons, but she has done so much in her life, especially acting. Um, she's done things outside of acting that are tremendous, and she's got a new movie coming out called uh, Murder and Cocktails, which we're going to discuss. It is my honor to introduce to you Miss Lucy Boyer. And Lucy, thank you for coming on today. It's a real honor. Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. So Lucy, um, one of the things that I was, it was interesting to find out about you is you were a very good baton twirler when you were a young kid. Um, you uh, actually qualified for nationals in Seattle, I believe in 1980, correct? Yeah, I went to nationals in Seattle yeah. in 1980. Yeah, I went uh, in dance twirl and I placed, uh, eventually I placed 15th, but uh I competed up and down the, the West Coast in Oregon. Uh, we, we even went up to Washington because I was in Portland. A um, little bit, I think I did one in California, but that was it. But it was yeah. really- Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but um, it's, That's really, a it's really amazing, Lucy, because when I watch the different um, twirlers do this, I mean, it looks so hard and so many of you just make it look so effortlessly. Um, how much work did you have to put in um, as a young kid uh, to, you know, compete like you did. Oh yeah. It, I started, I think I was about eight and I started at the YWCA, um, baton classes once a week. And then that led to private lessons and pretty much wearing out tennis shoes in my driveway, uh, every a couple of months because you're like spinning around. So I practiced in my driveway. Um, you know, if you had enough money, you could practice in a gym. Sometimes I could do that at like the high school, that kind of thing. So it was a lot of work. But my mom, uh, she really enjoyed it. She made my costumes. You know, she would take me to all the, the lessons. And it was kind of a weekend thing for us. So we did um, weekend tournaments. And they weren't just baton twirling. It was the pageant scene. So we'd do interview and modeling. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, too, Lucy, um, you were a young kid, so I don't know if you were able to appreciate it as much then. But you really have to look back and really like uh, be proud of yourself that you got to go to nationals, you know, especially I know it's big in Seattle and things like that. So, I mean, as a young kid, that had to be one of your fondest childhood memories, I'm sure. Well, it really is. It was so much fun with my mother because she was such a, you know, I she was right there with me. She actually got her driver's license because we started going to the weekend baton tournaments. So that's, she learned how to drive so she could take me to these places. And, you know, it was sometimes staying over the night in a Motel 6, or we would stay the night with another girl who was baton twirling their family, you know, right. and wake up early in the morning and go and do, it was good for me, you know. So I started as a dancer. Before I did the baton twirling, I was a tap dancer, and I'm still a tap dancer, and I, I'm working on it again, like uh, during the strike, I started tapping a lot, so I'm taking some more classes, and I'm like intermediate level, but I've done it my whole life, so I was a dancer first before I started acting. Right, and let me ask you, Lucy, I know, um, and we'll get to this soon, you had went to Cal Arts, but did, yeah. you, have, did you have any desire at a young age to be an actress or did it kind of just you know happen in time because i know like a lot of young kids they want to get into acting you know you've seen so many childhood stars and stuff like that but was it even something that entered your mind like say eight or nine years old uh it, it was yeah it was coming along with the with the dancing and the baton twirling i started like my bluebird group and my campfire group i started organizing them when my mom was like the the leader campfire leader right there's like a woman on the block who does it <laughs> and uh that was my mom so i started organizing the group to be in to do plays and at, like i did i rewrote cinderella i rewrote snow white uh, revolving around the evil stepmother and the queen and, and then i played that role and then i directed everyone to be you know Right. This was before Wicked, Mike. <laughs> I was on something. <laughs> yeah. And 
<laughs> and the thing is, that. and the thing is too, Lucy, um, which I know like whenever we're young kids, we have a favorite show we watch or a favorite movie. And a lot of times that inspires us to want to do this. I mean, was yeah. there ever like a TV show that you really enjoyed or an actress or actor that you really enjoyed watching that, you know, kind of, you know, motivated you to want to do it someday? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I think the first show when and I was probably like eight or nine, uh, you know, and uh, was the Waltons. Yeah. And I saw the kids on that show and I thought, well, I can do that. And I think I even asked my parents about it at that age. And, you know, but I wasn't Neil Patrick Harris. I mean, that's what he did at eight years old. He said, we're going to Hollywood. And that was that, as a lot of kids do, you know. But no, I didn't do that. I, you know, I did high school and come on, Callie. And so she's exposing my <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention. <laughs> he wants to be part of it. But um, the man behind the screen. Yeah. But the other, the other thing is too, uh, you know, we talked about twirling, but in high school, I mean, you uh, took first place at the Oregon. Uh, it was the state speech champion, I believe, and you were first place yeah. in your high school. So, I mean, talk about that because, I mean, you know, that's not easy to do. To finish, I would say finishing in the top 10 is a major accomplishment. To finish first, I mean, you had to just be like, oh, my God, I'm this high school kid. And they, they chose me out of everybody. Oh, thanks. I mean, that's really nice. But the, I, yeah, I. I placed first for a uh, humorous dramatic. So it was like a, a humorous reading of a, of a drama. And I did the telephone call. It was a Dorothy Parker, like kind of short story. Some people have done like short films of it. Um, but it really, uh, and I, you know, I did dramatic readings too, but I, I always compared myself to these guys who did the um, one in the extemporaneous. And it was really the closest thing I was seeing to stand up comedy. Cause that to me is like kind of rock star, you know, it is, that's like rock star to me to be a stand up comedian. I, that's what I always wanted to do. <laughs> right. So let me ask you. The, um, who didn't? Who oh, doesn't? Oh, I know exactly. But um, <laughs> you uh, went to Cal arts, uh, Talk about that experience and what that was like, because a lot of times people don't realize, but those type of schools, they really kind of prepare you for what's in store when you want to someday become an actor or actress. And, you know, they don't necessarily teach you the rules of the game, but they definitely teach you how to be better performers. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think all those experiences, you know, kind of prepares you to to get into Hollywood. But yeah, CalArts, I was there with um, Don Cheadle. I mean, he was a couple of years ahead of me. So I got to watch him like my first couple of years. I was seeing him in the checkoff shows of the older, the other older classmen and the um, Shakespeare shows. And uh, it, it, he was amazing to watch. I mean, even then in at CalArts, you know, he stood out. Um, so, you know, you got to see some really talented people and uh, yeah, and a lot of the staff who were there at the time, they were auditioning as actors in Hollywood. So it really was, I got my SAG card between my third year at CalArts and my fourth year at CalArts. So when I graduated, I just kind of walked into being able to get an agent because you can more easily when you're younger, you know? Yeah. And the thing is too, Lucy, uh... This doesn't happen a lot. A lot of times you got to find small parts or you, you got to do commercials, whatever the case may be. I think it was like six or seven months after you graduated from CalArts, the the Doogie Hauser show just kind of happened for you. And it was really supposed to just be a, a day part for you. You really weren't supposed to yeah. be on. And then I think that first season you did 10 or 11 episodes. So just talk about how that all came about for you. Yeah, it was uh, five lines. And I did have to go into the callback with the whole group of producers. And, you know, Stephen Bochco was there in the middle. And, you know, we're talking 20 people probably. So, but coming from a theater background, when you walk into that situation, it is, you can kind of snap into that. But anyway, I, I just thought I have to, I have to put everything into these five lines that I could 
possibly muster. And I just, and it just worked, you know, there was, it was a scene with the four, the four of us, Neil and Max and Lisa and myself, yeah. and we were in the car, they were in the front, we were in the back and it was like a funny thing. And, you know, I think we just looked good together and the chemistry was there. So yeah, they brought me back a couple weeks later or a few weeks later. And then it was a week or, and, and then it kept like building and until uh, they offered me something. I was actually, I went in and read for, um, I'm gonna blank on the show right now, uh, uh, 21 Jump Street. Yeah. yeah. When, when they offered me Doogie, my agent was, you know, she was a little, just a small agent, but she was savvy. And, and she's like, oh, I'm gonna get you in on 21 Jump Street. And then she tried to create some kind of, you know, bidding war, but they're really, I tanked in the 21 Jump Street audition. <laughs> and the other thing too, Lucy, you just mentioned about 21 Jump Street, but correct me if I'm wrong, weren't you almost considered for one of the Beckys on Roseanne? I mean, you oh. almost got that, correct? Yeah, I tested, I screen tested yeah. with all the other, there were, uh, I believe there were seven of us. I wanna say nine of us. Um, they, I met John Goodman on the set. You know, they had us in full makeup, pretty much full kind of hair. Uh, we all wore the same shirt and it was like one line up one after the other. <laughs> but I knew Roseanne was up in the, the box, you know, and it was on the sitcom stage, like the three big cameras. It was very, very intimidating, but very, uh, you know, very cool. Right. And uh, Lucy, back to Doogie Hauser. I mean, you talk about Stephen Bosco and what a genius this guy is. And he's always had tremendous writers because that show was comedy, but it was also drama as well. And it had a lot of, you know, episodes that, you know, were good, but they were also like, you know, gut wrenching, gut wrenching too at times. And I really enjoyed the chemistry between your character and Max's character, because I mean, yeah, I could never take Max serious, what his character serious, when he was getting mad at Janine. And Janine just played the perfect uh, match for him because Janine wasn't a, he. Max could try to take advantage of um, his character could take advantage of Doogie, but he he could never do that with Janine. Janine was like tougher than him, and she wasn't going to take any of his nonsense. Yeah, I mean, I I always thought they had like a you know Alice and Ralph Cramden type relationship right the honeymooners <laughs> yeah of, i mean without the wife beating i guess <laughs> but i mean it really was i mean like the, you two brought out the best of each other and i mean that that show needed that as well because you need those supporting characters to really help the show grow and think about this um lucy you what started out is just a five lines in one episode, you're one of the few that could say you were on all four seasons. Now, I know in season four, they didn't have you in as many episodes, but you were a regular for three of those four seasons. And I mean, you were a big part of the success of that show. Oh, thanks. Uh, so do you uh, know who directed that first episode? Because he was Stephen Boschko's like protege. Um, who would that be? The, uh, uh, from uh, Pacific, David... Uh, Blank. Oh, Milch, Milch. No, uh, he does Pacific the um, the show with uh, you know um, the show with Reese Witherspoon and. Oh, what uh, is that? I know who you're talking about. You know exactly oh. why am I yes. blanking on his name? He's Michelle Pfeiffer's husband. Yes, yes. <laughs> so he directed the very first episode of Doogie. He, uh, you know, he was Bochco's protege, basically. So he directed a lot of the episodes. On. Uh, that was the particular one that I was in that I remember. Um, one of the directors who directed me in like um, Janine. Oh, the episode where she's date raped or she's yeah. talk. she comes to Doogie and she talks to him about a date rape. Uh, one of the directors went on to, I just saw his name on um, that Nashville show when it was around. He directed a bunch of episodes on Nashville. So yeah. some of the Doogie Hauser people are definitely still around. You know, they're, oh, so yeah. big. they're so big now, it's hard to get in the door. And, you know, um, the thing, too, uh, about that show is, and it was amazing how Bosco could uh, incorporate every character and have, like, something special about them. And I think about Marcus Redman's character. He starts out as robbing a convenience store, and then they bring him back in season two. 
and they get him a jab as an orderly at the show. Then he eventually becomes an EMT. So they showed you, too, that you can turn your life around, that that was the message they would try to send. And I just always felt like it was just such powerful TV. And I know the show was only on four years, but that was one of the best shows in the 90s, I think. Oh, thank you, Mike. Yeah, and I think it really did have the same kind of, you know, I mean, when when I started watching The Waltons and I had that feeling of, you know, really, it, it, Doogie Hauser was very much like that, you know, like The Waltons. The parents were, you know. Yeah, and, you know, James, James had been around forever. I mean, he had done Hill Street Blues. Um, yeah. he, was, he was the perfect father on that show, you know, as was... Um, everybody on that show, like I Belinda, said, Belinda, Belinda yes, Carlisle, yep, great. She was, she was, yeah, she was really wonderful. And you know, another episode, and it's still tough for me to watch this day, is uh, Lisa's character when she has to deal with the death of her mother. And the thing about your character in that episode is when a lot of times we'll, we would see your character again going at it with Max, but your character in that episode, you could see the how she felt for her friend and you saw the serious side of Janine. And I mean, I just thought you did a wonderful job in that episode. Oh, thanks Mike. Thank yeah. you. You know? So, I mean, it was a tremendous show. And when you look back on it, I know you've done so many things since then, but I mean, that was your first big break. You have to be proud yeah. that you brought that series. Oh, it was so much fun. I absolutely. I mean, it really is the, the whole time. Uh, I pride myself on having a pretty good memory. And because those four years were so jam packed with fun and <laughs> adventure yes. and great times and mem like things I'll never forget. It's hard to remember everything. It was so, it, you know, a lot of it is like, whoa, it went by so quickly. Yeah, it really did. But Lucy, let me ask you, um, what were some of the roles you did later on that, you know, you kind of enjoyed, I mean, some that like um, when you went into it, you were like, oh, I don't know if this is for me. And then it kind of worked out for you um, because I think that, you know, one one show that you I think you were on eight or nine episodes not too long ago was too hot to handle. And you did yes. a great show. You played Edna and, you know, you've done a great job with that show. And I really Thank think you. that's I think that's an underrated show as well. So, I mean, is that one of the ones you really enjoy as well? Oh yeah, thank you so much. We wrote and directed all of those. Um, uh, the other actress, Hannah Warko and I, and uh, all the other actors who were in the episodes were doing a lot of improv and things, but we, we really, and then uh, we edited a lot of them. Some of them I had a friend edit, but it was really, um, and we still have, we have like one show that's still in the editing process. And we've got other shows we, we might do, but, um, you know, for Too Hot to Handle. It was so much fun. You know, that's like doing that kind of stuff. I can express myself in a different, in the, you know, writing is a lot, is a big part of it. And just coming up with the ideas, you know, having, um, uh, I come up with ideas in the grocery store, you know, interacting with some woman. I was like, right. running, you know, I was like walking down the aisle and I realized she's, she's like starting to race me down the aisle to get to the register, you know, it's so, it's so competitive in Los Angeles. We like race to the, in the grocery store. And so I have this idea. I want to do a skit of that where literally, you know, it just it kind of like blowing things out of proportion and going, you know, being exaggerating it. Right. And theater Lucy, of the absurd. <laughs> yeah. And Lucy, um, interestingly enough, you left acting for about, I would say, 10 to 12 years, somewhere yep. along there. Um, you, a lot of, you know, people will do that. And then the good thing about it is, though, they they do come back eventually. And you've returned yeah. then. You know, one of the things I saw too, Lucy, that was really cool is you you had this YouTube channel a couple of years back and you did these like uh, short little films on YouTube. And I'll tell you, the one where like uh, the lady's trying to like come up to you and ask you if she could talk to you and you're crying and you're like, what do you want? And then you just like start talking to her. And in the beginning, I'm thinking to myself, is this real or is this fake? I couldn't tell. So that's a tremendous oh, thank job. you. Yeah, that was a tremendous job by you because, you know, at first I'm thinking to myself, 
this lady just film her while she's trying to go to her car but it was really acting and it was acting at its best but you were playing yourself which was oh, really cool. thank you thank you yeah that was uh talking about like the church of scientology and um i have a couple like scientology videos that i was toying around with but uh that was another uh show idea that I've still got it, you know, Chelsea Handler's, you know, girls behaving badly. Yeah. I love, <laughs> I love that idea, you know, of uh, not so much pranking people, but um, uh, kind of doing improv with them and getting into like strange situations with people who aren't really, you know, they're not, you know, nothing, nothing too serious, but, it, but it, it's just, just enough that it's funny. Um, I guess like candid camera type stuff. <laughs> I love all these old shows. Yeah, but it, it, I grew it, up on those shows. So it just goes to show though, Lucy, that um, like Alan Funt, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, but it goes to show that an actor could be very creative in so many ways that they could do these little short stories, short films. And you know, they could play themselves, but they could play like exaggerations of themselves, which is really cool yeah. as well. And I mean, do you, it sounds like to me that you would do every part of acting, whether it's acting, uh, directing, writing, producing, you seem like to me, you would enjoy doing all of it. Is that correct? Oh yeah, I do. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think you have to have that passion for it because if you go into it saying, oh, let me get this done and then I could go home. Then you're really not, you're, you're not going to be a good actress if that's the attitude you have, I believe. I mean, I know I've had a little bit of technical difficulties here, but that's on apps. But as far as cameras and things, I've done uh, director of photography work on a music video. Um, and I do a lot of, uh, for friends of mine, for their uh, commercial spec uh, projects, I've done some um, DP work. I love, I love being behind the camera and like uh, for self tapes, you know, as actors, we're constantly self taping. And so you have to get your friend to be a reader and get behind the camera. And I love doing that. I really do. Yeah. Right. Lucy, you know, you touched on this earlier in the interview. Um, how difficult was it for you as an actress while this strike was going on? Because you couldn't really work and you had to just kind of sit and wait and this was one of the longer strikes that uh, they've had. So how, how difficult was it? Because you're trying to, I know some people like what they would do is they would try to do stuff on their own while they were waiting for this to be resolved. So how difficult as an actress was that for you? Yeah, it, I took the time to work on my tap dancing. Uh, and I also, we, we shot and got some too hot to handle shows out and um uh, yeah, it was it was difficult. I was actually thinking of, you know, what are the other markets? Maybe I should move to Atlanta. Maybe I should maybe I should go to Australia and, you know, take the time to like relocate and get into their industry there. So many other actors, foreign actors, it's it seems like they're they're so, you know, worldly. They're so global. And right. I don't know. Do you see? You don't see a lot of American actors in other countries doing stuff. Um, what's her name? Elizabeth uh, from Downton Abbey. You know, is probably one of the uh, the only ones. <laughs> right. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, I really, you know, respect all the writers and actors who, you know, one thing that is good about everyone is they stick together and you have to support each other because you're all going through it together. So even though it was tough not to work, it, it, it's the right thing to do because you have to kind of look out for, I, I oh, say yeah. this a lot, you have to look out for the little guy because that's who's going to get hurt in the long run. Yeah. 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 It was a, it was a definitely a needed strike. So um, yeah, I just tried to work on some other skills and, you know, think about things, but um, I'm excited. We're back and, you know, excited yeah. to be able to that this movie came out and able to you know right and you know lucy um i am gonna watch it after we do the interview I, oh yeah no worries yeah, yeah i looked it up though like just so i could see what the plot's about and i gotta tell you it's called murder and cocktails and you play rose and the thing about it is it, you know i gotta watch it but i kind of vision it almost being similar 
but like a 21st century version of like clue but a little of other things because you know the plot is everybody's going to be invited to this apartment to figure out who murdered this uh person so it really looks like it but it looks like it's got some comedy to it too so i think it's going to be so much fun to watch so just talk about that movie and how it came about for you yeah, I think the genre is a dark comedy, but but it's definitely in the who done it, you know, genre. So, uh, and this was uh, Ron Jackson, the director. I'd worked with him a couple of years prior, and well, in 2020, and um, for a kind of a spec project. And he called me again, and I I spent uh, last Christmas just auditioning for this movie. <laughs> I I think I auditioned for I every female role in the movie before they whoops Callie my dog is sorry <laughs> Callie Earl come on here we go uh so you know they had me audition the entire <laughs> the entire character like all of her dialogue so and then and then I was out there uh, down in San Diego shooting like pretty much the, the following weekend I'm sorry oh no worries at all. I think Callie wants to be part of the show but um, Kelly girl, come here. <laughs> Do you want to say hello? <laughs> Shy. <huh? laughs> but uh, for my part, they were already shooting uh, when I got down there. And so we shot the whole thing, all of my scenes, at least, in uh, their condo in San, Di in San Diego. It's on the ninth floor. Um, and it's this beautiful view. And so the whole set, I mean, it really looks amazing. And it's amazing that they shot it in their condo. Right. So they've done, the group that I joined, they've actually done quite a few movies together. And uh, Henry Burial, the director, he's like right. a theater, theater director. Well, he's also an acting teacher. And so they've all, a, a lot of the other cast, uh, Billy Lawley, they, they, they've all worked together before, for years. Um, so... So it was just really nice. I mean, going from, I think I had maybe six lines in his, the director's previous spec project. So getting a role that's just, you know, I had, I have quite a few scenes in it and it's one of the, the major characters. And it was just really such a, such a stroke of luck, I feel like, you know? meeting him they and they really there's so much fun um ron really his whole thing with the movie is that it's like a uh you know the thin man series from the 40s with myrna loy and william right. powell and i grew up on those movies so you know i grew up on all of the the black and white stuff that would really influenced me and uh so it's funny i mean we never even really talked about that but the genre the way he writes i it really feels like I'm able to kind of just walk into it. And it's easy for me to understand uh, his writing and the way he does it. And he likes what I do. And it's just, you know, it's not very often that someone, a writer is like, oh, well, he told me he's, writ he's written the sequel already. So if this does well, you know, then we'll be able to shoot a sequel. And I'm in the sequel. Oh, very nice. And um, <laughs> how long did it take to film this, Lucy? Uh, I think they were shooting, gosh, I want to say like 20, 20 something days, maybe 20, 21 days or something. And that's fascinating to me, Lucy, because before you came on, they had already done 20 days of uh, shooting the film and you're in it a lot. And you're also one of the main characters. So it just goes to show that the work that goes into putting a movie together because the main characters may not surface, you know, for days of shooting. And, you know, it just tells you what the directors, the writers, the producers, everybody, what goes into really making a movie. Oh yeah. Uh, I, the most of the, the scenes and everything take place with between the couple, the two lead characters who right. I, I think are really quite good. Um, they're, they're both very, very, uh, overly good looking, you know, which you, you want two good, two leads yeah. to be. And, and then they're, they're both really good actors. And, and by the way, they were both really nice. I mean, nicest, nicest people too. Right. So I think, I think it, it, it just debuted on the 23rd, right? So it just yes. came on. So 
where can we watch this, uh, Lucy? It's on uh, Amazon Prime. It's on Apple TV. Um, yeah. It's on some cable uh, networks right now. Um, it will be for, it should be for the next uh, two to three months. Right. And I would think if it's on the, if it's on Apple TV and Prime, it'll be on there all the time. So, I mean, you'll get to always have the opportunity to watch it. And that's the thing too, Lucy, that I know, listen, there's positives and negatives about streaming and things like that. But really the, the positive about streaming is it gives them so much more access to kind of show different things. And you could really like, you know, watch it instead of trying to figure out what theater to go to, you can watch the movie right on a, you know, a channel like Prime. So I really do like that part of the uh, streaming aspect of TV. Yeah, I like it. I, I don't mind streaming at all. Um, I still, you know, I get paid for Doogie Howser still because it's streaming. Yeah. And that's the thing too, Lucy, is think about this. That show came out in um, the fall of 1989. So you're you're going on 35 years now where you've been doing acting in some capacity. And you have to be proud about that because here you are in 2024 and you're doing this movie, Murder and Cocktails, which is, you know, seems like it's going to be a great movie. So the fact that you're still working to this day just goes to show that, you know, you're not one to rest on your laurels. After Doogie Howser, Lucy Boyle still can uh, continue to work. Oh, thanks, Mike. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, are there any projects upcoming that you could tell us about or stuff that might be in the works that, you know, we could look forward to down the well, road? Well, yeah. I mean, I was really happy to hear that Ron had written a sequel to Murder and right. Cocktails. And so it's going to be starring still the, the two main leads, uh, Nick and Lana. And, and then he says, I'm in it. And he says, I have a, a bigger part for, uh, in this next one even. So I was, I was so, I was just, just to have a writer say that to you is, you know, even if it never comes to fruition, it was so complimentary, you know, it's really, really nice. So. Right. Um, well, I have to believe Lucy, if he's thinking about a sequel, he has a good idea that this thing is going to, you know, be received well. And the thing that's, you know, encouraging as well is if you're in the sequel that means your character survives this first movie so that's I could, a I little least, bit of a spoiler <laughs> yeah i could at least watch that movie and know that your character is you know in it till the end but i really do think it's going to be fun to watch and you know if the sequel does happen we'll have you back on the show but i definitely want to have you back at some point to talk about the movie you know i i figure give it like a few months that way people could watch it okay that we don't spoil it but I do think this is great what you're doing and I really do applaud what you've done over 35 years and, you know, just thank you for giving me and fans everywhere something to smile about. So I appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Mike. It was really nice talking. You as well. Well, folks, I encourage you to go on Apple TV, Prime Video. There's some cable networks, but Murder and Cocktails, she plays Rose and I think it's going to be an unbelievable movie. I can't wait to watch it. And this actress has done a lot in her career. And I've said this many times. I go back to it a lot. But Doogie Hauser would not be successful without people like Lucy who helped pave the way for the success of that show. And she's a credit not only to the TV industry, but to her parents and her family. For In the Spotlight, I'm Mike Kenichi saying good night, everyone.